So if we think about um, why we do this, um, if we go back in time, you know, to when man first became um, man, life was very different, not necessarily better, but as you could see, there was no cars, you know, our bodies were designed to travel. They were designed to be for exercise. And um, biologically, when we exercise, it creates all these happy endorphins. So life then was much more active. And, you know, in order to live, you had actually had to do quite a lot of hard work, quite a lot of physical exercise. But now when we look at modern society, we can see a lot of people, most people spend their time cooped up in offices and, you know, they're sitting at desks and you can see a lot of the posture is very bad. And we spend a lot of our time traveling in cars. And we know in a lot of our cities in Ireland that, you know, congestion is just horrendous. And the recommendation is that if you're sitting at a desk all day, that you should actually get up every hour and stretch and walk about. That's how important exercise is. But unfortunately, as a society, we've moved away from this idea that exercise should be a normal part of life. And indeed, if you're a patient, you spend even more time actually just sitting down, waiting in corridors, you know, waiting in bed. And it's really very difficult in our in our modern society for people to be physically active. They have to make such a huge effort to try and stay physically active. And when you're a patient, you know, and particularly when you're um, on dialysis, you spend a long time hooked up, hooked up to a machine. So it's really very difficult um, to actually, you know, maintain body fitnesses. And yet all the studies show that um, exercise is so important. And indeed, as you when older people are admitted um, to hospital, the longer they stay in hospital, the more body strength they lose, that they actually lose their muscle strength. So there's an expression that's used in a lot of the, the rehab services called use it or lose it. Or you might see move it, don't lose it. And that's why um, this new development from kidney beam is so important and so exciting because what it's doing is it's making it much, much easier for kidney patients um, to actually exercise. And it's such a core part of staying healthy and staying fit. So if we look at the agenda, we've done the housekeeping. I've just done the welcome. And then I'm going to hand over now, uh, when I've gone through the agenda, to Dr. Claire Kennedy, who's going to talk about exercise and kidney disease uh, in uh, St. James's Hospital. She's a nephrologist there. And then we're going to hear from uh, Mel Bernardo, who is um, head of operations in kidney beam. He's going to explain exactly what kidney beam is and then actually give us a demonstration of how easy it is to use, because that's really important that it's easy to use. And then I'll hand over to James, who's the chairperson of uh, PKRF, and he's going to talk about why he got involved in this. And then we'll have a session and Colin will facilitate this for you to ask questions and you can put them into the chat function. You don't actually have to ask, but we'll have time uh, for your own questions and answers. And then I'll do a quick update on other IKA developments. There's other exciting things that we're doing. And then we'll be looking for your feedback on how useful you found the session and how likely you are to actually sign up to use Kidney Beam because it is free thanks to PKRF and James Tracy. And then finally, we'll hand over to Eddie Flood, who's our national IK chairperson, and he is himself uh, a transplant uh, patient. Uh, so we aim to finish, depending on questions, we'll aim to finish um, roughly slightly after eight. Is that okay? Great, well, I'm going to hand over um, to Dr. Claire Kennedy now, and I'm going to stop sharing and allow Claire to bring up her slides. Thank you. I'm, give me a second. So um, hopefully you can hear me and hopefully you can see my slides. Um, if not, obviously let me know. Um, so my name is Claire Kennedy. Um, I'm a nephrologist in St. James's Hospital, and I know some people on this call already. I'm delighted to see some familiar names and faces. Um, I'd like to firstly say thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. Again, I also feel pretty strongly about this topic, um, and I'm delighted to be here amongst such a dynamic and inspiring lineup of speakers. 
And um, yeah, I have a lot of thanks and gratitude towards Kidney Beam and also to James and his team um, for what they're bringing forward for, our, for us here in Ireland and um, for involving me. So I'd just like to talk for a couple of minutes about exercise in the setting of kidney disease. As Carol alluded to, there are certainly some challenges. Um, and so people with chronic kidney disease tend to be quite fatigued. And depending on the cause of their kidney disease and, and what else is going on for them medically, they can have a lot of other symptoms too. And this obviously makes it difficult to factor exercise in on a daily basis. Um, add into that, that there's often a lot of medical appointments for things like blood tests and visits to the doctor and visits to the GP and blood pressures. And you can suddenly see how your schedule becomes quite packed and it's hard to fit structured exercise in there too. And of course, we know people with kidney disease often have other illnesses too, for example, diabetes and heart disease and vascular disease, again, making it all the more difficult to exercise um, and to find the time to exercise. That said, we also know that exercise has a lot of benefits for people with chronic kidney disease. And there's been a body of research over the last 40 years showing us this with lots of different trials. All of the trials point to improved quality of life um, for people that exercise regularly with chronic kidney disease. People report improved physical functioning and, and what they can, um, I guess, engage with and how they can function in their daily life. And in the longer term, it has improvements for blood pressure, which we know is extremely important for people with kidney disease. Um, and as Carol alludes to as well, um, people who exercise regularly with chronic kidney disease have reduced hospital lengths of stay when they're admitted for various reasons. So, for example, if they're admitted for a fracture of a hip, they tend to have shorter length of stay, um, which is a big advantage for a number of, of reasons. Um, so lots of benefits there from doing regular exercise. And I can tell you, quite frankly, I can't think of a single thing that I prescribe that has all of these benefits with no side effects. Um, so really, exercise should be what we're prescribing all the time, along with everything else that we prescribe. Um, and because of all these benefits, um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, and KDGO, who um, make up all the international kidney guidelines, both recommend 150 minutes a week of physical activity for people with chronic kidney disease. Um, for people on dialysis, it can become harder again to exercise when you factor in doing dialysis, be it in hospital or at home, you know, suddenly your day is pretty packed um, and it's very hard to start fitting other things in. And as well as that, people on dialysis tend to have more pronounced symptoms, fatigue and shortness of breath and, and other symptoms that can really impact on their ability to exercise. But again, there are really important benefits here, um, as well as the ones I've mentioned. There are some really specific ones for people that are on dialysis. And so one of these is people on dialysis who are trying to get on the transplant wait list. Um, the transplant list in Ireland and internationally has criteria, um, both in terms of weight or more specifically BMI, but also in terms of fitness. And sometimes patients are declined for one or both of these reasons um, because of the worry that they would run into complications after the transplant um, if they're not fit enough or if they are carrying excess weight and that they'd run a high risk of their wound breaking down. So in order to get fit for the transplant waitlist and to sometimes meet the weight criteria for the transplant waitlist, exercise can play a really important role in that for people on dialysis. Um, the reason I include this picture is um, this is a dialysis machine with exercise bike nearby. And um, although I, I don't actually see any blood flowing in the picture, you can take it that you can do exercise during dialysis. And actually there's a lot of research that shows if you do exercise during dialysis, this in, improves your circulation, your blood flow, and actually gives you better dialysis. You get more bang for your buck from your dialysis, um, which is obviously a big benefit. The more dialysis you get, the more toxins you clear. And so um, I've worked abroad. Some units have um, uh, exercise bikes, just like these stationary bikes, and some patients engage in exercise during dialysis, um, which helps improve all of the things we've mentioned, as well as their dialysis itself. And this is the vision I have for for my dialysis unit that patients who are willing and able to engage in exercise during dialysis have access to do so um, for all of these benefits that it brings. Um, again, for people on dialysis, despite all of the challenges that they have, the recommendations are for 150 minutes a week of exercise. 
And then for those people who are, are transplanted, as I mentioned, getting on the transplant waitlist exercise can play a big role there in terms of getting them uh, fit for transplant. Um, but post transplant, it has important benefits too. Um, often we see people put on a lot of weight after transplant, and a lot of that is from the steroids that we have to give them. And, and some of it's from their appetite actually improving and them feeling well, which is obviously a good thing. But for some people, it can become excessive, um, which obviously tends to, you know, end up becoming not that healthy for them and, and runs a risk of, of bringing in new onset diabetes after transplant, which is something that we try to avoid. And so to try and avoid excessive weight gain and diabetes after transplant, exercise plays a big role there and can be very beneficial in staving both of those off. Um, just to show you a bunch of transplant people having a good time exercising, this is a photograph from Dublin Airport of the transplant team um, heading away on their adventures. Um, and this is a group of people of all sorts of ages and all sorts of fitness levels who really personify um, how important it is to exercise. Um, and they really value exercise in terms of maintaining their health. It's a really inspiring group of people. Um, and that's where Kidney Beam comes in and where I'm really grateful for Kidney Beam. Um, as a nephrologist, I've had difficulties getting some of these things up and running for my patients. Um, it's difficult to find the resources for physio and it's difficult to find the resources for all the fancy equipment. Um, and so even though I'm very motivated to do so, it's certainly been a challenge to get all of these things for my patients. Um, and that's why I'm glad I do have something concrete to offer, which is Kidney Beam. Um, and it has been created by a group of experts. You're going to hear all about it soon. Um, the King's College physiotherapists taking a leading role there. And it offers a, a bunch of classes, either live or on demand for exercise and also for other things, including um, some patient education and uh, motivation and um, little motivation classes. And um, yeah, I, I feel like it's a really useful and beneficial tool in trying to motivate us and uh, have us incorporate exercise routinely into our week so that the 150 minutes can be met because 150 minutes can be met with just 20 minutes a day. You're pretty much hitting it. And I think Kidney Beam offers a really um, user-friendly way to make this happen. Um, but of course, as a doctor, I want to know what's the evidence and is there any evidence behind it? And the Kidney Beam have published a trial. I'm sure there's a lot more to come. Um, but this uh, first kind of initial trial had 340 participants um, and half the patients were in the Kidney Beam group and half the patients just had standard care. Um, the kidney beam group were encouraged to attend twice a week sessions over 12 weeks and they did get some education and support from a physio assistant and at 12 weeks um, the patients reported improved scores for a lot of different uh, domains including mental health related quality of life their physical functioning their symptoms their social interactions and anxiety scores so although it's a small trial and it's a short period of time it's a positive um, result and again, as I said, there's little that I can prescribe that will have all of these benefits for a patient with no side effects. And so um, I'm all for it myself. Um, I guess I will add a caveat that I don't want everybody, you know, just suddenly going off doing intense bodybuilding, you know, in their front room. Um, obviously, you have to use it with a grain of sense as we do everything we approach in life. And, um, you know, James' wife was just telling me there she's doing the marathon. I'm not doing the marathon. I haven't trained for it. You know, we add the same common sense to kidney beam. If you have physical limitations or you don't feel like a certain exercise is right for you, don't do it. St take a step back and just check with your team, your physio, your nurse, your doctor. We'd all be happy to advise. Um, but, you know, the exercises in general are very tailored to um, people with kidney disease. And certainly uh, you, you can take it at your own pace. So we do ask you to use your common sense with it, as we would with any exercise and any exercise equipment. Um, and most of all, of course, to enjoy it, because I think um, it's really there for your enjoyment as well as your um, health benefits. Um, so with that, I'll wrap up. And of course, I'll be happy to take questions at the whenever that time is. Um, and again, thank you so much to James and team for making this a reality. And thank you everyone for including me um, tonight. That's great. Um, thanks very much, um, Dr. Kennedy. And as you can see, you know, this is coming from somebody who is um, at the coalface 
and is giving it a really big endorsement. And what I'd like to do before I bring in Mel is actually ask a patient who has had a lot of experience of the benefits of exercise to just give uh, his his experience. So Peter, would you like to unmute yourself, Peter Heffernan, and say a few words? Thank you very much, Carl. Uh, I'll be very brief. Hi, hi there. Um, ju just I want to give a, a very brief example of something that uh, in a practical day-to-day -day sense that emphasizes the point that Claire has just made. If I can give you a very, very brief history. Um, I got transplanted in uh, 2011. I was on dialysis for six years before, before that. Uh, this year, the kidney has gone up and I've gone back on dialysis. Okay. Now, um, I've been very lucky. I went to my first transplant games in 2008. And except for maybe two years or three years, I've gone to every, I've, I've gone to every games and uh, my sport is swimming. Last week, I had a meeting with the transplant team to try and get back on the transplant list. And the first time round that I, I, I went to meet the surgical team to get on the transplant list before my transplant in 2011, one of the issues that came up was that I was overweight. So they said to me, I'm sorry, go back, go away for, well, they put it very nicely, but basically they said, go away for about uh, three months, lose some weight. And when you come back and you get a certain figure, we'll put you on the transplant list. And that's what I did. And thankfully that's what happened. This time around, however, it was slightly different. When I when I saw the consultants, um, again, my body mass index is slightly above what it should be. But what they said to me, well, Peter, um, we, we see you've been an athlete at transplant games and you swim on a regular basis. So we're not going to ask you to go back. We know you're swimming and we know you're exercising. And um, we would say to you, you know, you just try and get the weight down a little bit. So there, there was a very, a very real example of what fitness has done to me. It's got me on back on the transplant list maybe six months or more or three to six months or more because of the history I've had in participating at the transplant games, but effectively in uh, in exercising. So I, I couldn't but I couldn't more support what I what Claire is saying there about the, the importance of exercise. So ho ho hopefully that makes the point. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Peter. And I think it's always really important to hear the voice of, of the patient. And I think Peter's story there really illustrates and the benefits of the exercise, and he's been a, a strong member of uh, Transplant Team Ireland, and um, you know we can really see, you know, the lived real experience of somebody. So thanks very much, Peter, for uh, sharing your story. So now I'm going to hand over to uh, Mel Bernardo from Kidney Beam, and he's head of operations. So he's going to show us um, an, an introduction to Kidney Beam, and then do a walkthrough of the actual system. Thank you very much, Claire. And again, thank you um, to everyone today for um, bringing me along. Uh, Carol, for the lovely introduction. Claire, for her lovely endorsement from a nephrologist. Um, interestingly, actually, Claire, just before I jump in, uh, we've just be really interesting for you. We've just been accepted for the study uh, to be published in The Lancet, which will be coming out in the next few weeks. So keep an eye on that, not just Hi. Claire, but especially Claire, because from a clinical point of view, there'll be a lot more detail about that study and kind of the impact and benefits and yeah, obviously, IKA and the rest of the organizations, you'll probably want to keep an eye on that as well. Brilliant. So I'm going to give a bit of an introduction about kind of what brought us to this point in the journey for Kidney Beam, and then I'll show very quickly um, what the platform looks like. Um, so Kidney Beam itself is an exercise and lifestyle management app for people living with kidney disease, and we refer to it as kidney disease or CKD, chronic kidney disease, and it has been curated um, by the King's College physiotherapy team. Dr. Charlene Greenwood is our uh, chief medical officer. But it's really important as well to note that the platform has been co-developed with patients and people living with kidney disease. It's been going, I believe now for uh, almost three and a half years. Um, and a lot of the platform has been, uh, you know, worked on with feedback from patients across the UK. Um, yeah, and, and working on who's the right audience and which content is the right one for different people. Um, as Claire mentioned, the, the sessions are currently run by the hospital team at King's and um, the live sessions, but we also have a, a library of on-demand videos that have been recorded either by clinicians who specialize 
with CKD or by patients who happen to be a yoga teacher, but are also living with CKD. So there's a lot more um, understanding about the condition and kind of the most appropriate modifications and changes that you might need to make during the course of exercise or even educational sessions. Just moving through my slides as always, never wants to play. There we go. Um, so as everyone's already mentioned, and I'm just echoing, uh, being more active obviously helps with your mental health and well-being, your physical function, and slows down a little bit of the progression of that disease and obviously just tries to improve your, your quality of life, um, regardless of where your starting point is. And I think it's really important to mention that everyone will be starting from a different starting point, regardless of your stage of disease or you know how long it's been, because every body, physical body, is very different. So don't don't underestimate where you are and make sure that you're, like Claire said, talking to your team and, and finding the most appropriate sessions for yourself when you join. Um, as we mentioned, um, kidney, kid, kidney Beam is supported mostly by the King's College clinical team. Um, and we've been working across England primarily and obviously with the help of the IKA um, and Punchestown being able to offer it out to Ireland. Um, and hoping to work closely with Claire going forward um, about getting this out to patients and spreading the word beyond even just uh, kind of this audience and as far and wide as we can uh, within Ireland. The reason we started is, you know, there are very, there are lots of options of home exercise applications such as Apple Fitness Plus, Peloton, Active, but none of those are health condition specific. They don't cater for the journey that someone may be on based off their own uh, chronic conditions that they're living with, their own health. So what we tried to develop was a platform that gave elements of those in terms of improved fitness and also community building. I think it's really important to emphasize that as well. A lot of our kidney beamers, as we like to refer to them, really enjoy the interaction with other people living with CKD. So, you know, attending live sessions and being able to chat to someone who's had similar um, uh, health questions that week or being able to reach out to clinicians when it's not a scheduled appointment as part of their routine care. You know, that, that community um, element is just as important as the fitness, the mental health, and, and kind of just ties everything all in together. So kidney, it's a kidney specific exercise and lifestyle management app. At the moment, it's a web based app, but in the imminent future, we'll have it no doubt as a mobile app um, and it will continue to develop as we get more feedback from people like yourselves. The content itself is supremely tailored, as we've already mentioned. Um, they're specific to people living with the condition. Um, there's a range of on-demand, there's a range of live classes, and there's also some structured programs. So the structured programs are a series of on-demand videos that have been curated uh, primarily with Charlene and other clinical advisors to say, okay, this is the sequence that we want to do and we'll follow them one after each other. So it's very clear to you, you know, we're starting at this point, I'm doing this session and the next one is almost available to me. Um, but these are also partnered with educational sessions. So, you know, you, there is information there um, within the platform from topics that range from nutrition through to uh, side effects, through to comorbidities. There's a whole variety of things that um, any kidney beamer can dip in and out and, and do whichever content they see fit, whether that's you know, exercise movement, or they want to find out a bit more about something that they heard from their care team or their clinical team or read somewhere. A little bit about the journey of where we are. So as I mentioned, we started back in July 2020. Um, and it was a response to the COVID pandemic uh, within England, primarily, um, the physiotherapy team uh, was told that a lot of their renal rehabilitation services were deprioritized during the course of the COVID pandemic the response was kidney beam. Um, and this is kind of the journey it's gone on. And actually this doesn't include everything because at the moment we're talking to um, organizations within the USA about bringing that to a USA market. We're talking about potentially offering it into other languages as well. So not just new locations, but even within the current locations, being able to offer that in multi languages so that we can um, try to provide the same content uh, and the same benefits to as many, a diverse a group as possible. Some of the scientifically proven, as mentioned, uh, you, we have just finished a research study that's about to be published in the Lancet imminently, but these are kind of the high level uh, improvements that individuals reported through going through the study, mental health, related quality of life, social and physical function, 
in improvement in their energy and fatigue levels and it gave patients the ability to help self-manage um, they had a lot more freedom um, both in the information they could access as well as how they manage their own physical fitness and, and levels a very brief summary of where we are right now um, we've just had another region within England join the group as well um, last year we had five out of the eight regions uh, supporting it um, and there's also rumors that the last two could be not far behind as well um, we've had a total of 18,000 classes completed since the platform began and about 72, I think it's actually now at 75% of everyone who does at least one session comes back to do many more, um, which is the most important thing because once we've got you through the, the sign up, the activation, kind of doing your first session, we want to make sure that the content is right for you to want to come back of your own accord. How do we get the word out uh, is a couple of different ways. Uh, one is obviously direct to patients through evenings like this, through social media. Um, you may uh, start to see uh, physical assets, posters, flyers kind of in clinical centers uh, and care teams kind of as we start to distribute those. It also comes through the clinician network that we're starting to build and we refer to them as our kidney beam champions uh, within England. And I would hesitate, I would love to say that Claire is one of our champions within the Republic of Ireland. Um, and so obviously her endorsement and her knowing about the platform, but also, you know, feeding back to us when there is feedback is really, really important to keeping the platform relevant uh, and updating. Um, yeah, and then the patient champions that we also have. We have uh, patient uh, organizations within the UK, um, in, within England primarily, that we talk to and, and present Kidney Beam like we are today. And that's the brand new logo that we introduced two weeks ago. Um, so we were Beam Kidney Disease up to that point. We're now officially Kidney Beam. So you'll see this new branding appear in all of our future communications. Um, and just a couple, just a very quick testimonial from, I think, one of our most powerful members, an 86 year old man, John, um, who's done a com <laughs> 232 sessions since he's been part of this. Um, and I think, you know, the improvement of him being able to walk about his house without having a walking stick to me is one of the biggest signs of improvement in his health. Um, I know we all have different goals and different targets of what we're achieving, um, but to see someone at 86 years old who historically probably wasn't the most active individual um seeing that that kind of change through participation on kidney beam is really really powerful so that's the presentation i had prepared uh, i'm just gonna drop straight into a platform demonstration for you and of course if anyone's got any questions of any of that um i'm feel feel free to pop your questions in the chat and we can we can review those so this is what the platform looks like um it's quite bright and colorful tries to make it a bit different to an average exercise platform um, i'm not going to go through the sign up process because you don't need me to sit here and go through what my name and date of birth is but essentially if you were going to sign up you'd go here to get started i already have a login so i'm just going to log straight in to the platform and just show you what it looks like it may be hopefully quite quick at loading, but we all know that when you need it, technology never works how you want it to. Um, great, so I think I'm in. Oh, yeah, there we go. Jump into kidney disease. So at the moment, this is, still says beam kidney disease. That will change as we start to refresh the, the branding across the website. So this is what you would see once you've logged in and you've signed up. Um, and you can see that across the top here, um, ignore the teens on beam. That was a, a little side project that I have. Um, this is where your assets are available to you. So the main ones that you're probably gonna be looking at as a patient are the on-demand, the programs, the live classes, and perhaps the groups. Um, there are a few blogs that specifically highlight our patients that you may wanna read other people's stories as well. Um, this is what the on-demand library looks like. Um, it is gonna be changing within a handful of weeks to make this even more um, user-friendly. But as you can see in here, there are, I think we're now at something like 250 videos that have many different uh, topics. Uh, some of them are how to maximize your sleep. Um, some of them are how to set goals. And then as you continue on, you can see that you'll get uh, gentle seated exercises. There are gentle stretches. We even partnered briefly with the Renal Arts Group um, and they offered some of their content for being able to do some art sessions with them online, which I found really interesting. And there was actually a lot of interest in those um, there's some educational sessions here talking about how to stay active, Dallas, and then you can continue scrolling and you'll see 
much further down once I get through all of the, <laughs> the top sessions. There's yoga, there's Pilates, there's introduction to HIIT as a nice kind of soft beginning uh, series of sessions that you can follow through. Um, so yeah, so there's quite a range here. Um, and I don't think we've had anyone say that there's anything that we're missing. But by all means, if you do happen to have a preference for something else, just shoot across an idea and a solution. We're always trying to make sure that this has got something for everyone because we're really conscious that everyone likes different things. Um, so we have dance here. We have specifically people sitting doing dialysis while moving as well, which I know that Claire mentioned earlier as well. Then we go into the programs. Um, the start beaming programs are kind of what we would call our, our base programs. So this is the 12 week renal rehab program that um, we mentioned that was just done as part of the study. Um, it's been kind of all put together as one big program. Um, so that's recommended as being two movement sessions a week um, and one education. Hence, it's a 12 week program that's 35 sessions. Um, and again, you can follow that once I hit start, it shows you how many I've done. And as you do each of the sessions, it, it lets you have access to the next one. Um, if once you get on, you're like, oh, I'm not sure I'm quite there yet. Please note that the, the renal rehab sessions have got both a standing and seated version in every single video. So we have one of the instructors is standing and doing the exercises, and then there's a low impact softer version with um, an individual sitting next to them doing a variation of that exercise um, for anyone that needs to do it sitting. Um, we have our get started, which is a little bit of where we recommend everyone goes to, first of all, because it's kind of like the very, very beginning of what do I want from Kidney Beam and what do I want on the platform? Um, it's only nine sessions, but it gives you a little taster across uh, the sessions and gives you an understanding of where you could move on to post that. Um, and as I say, there's a number of them. There's some taster sessions here if you want to try out one dance, one yoga, one Pilates, just all the different disciplines. And then there's a session, a program here specifically for polycystic kidney disease that's been tailored for them in partnership with the PKD charity. Um, there are spotlight programs, which are uh, a, a wider variety. They might be specifically if you're on dialysis, if you just prefer to do some Pilates, if you just want to do HIIT. So these are usually um, much shorter. Um, so you can see that they're six, seven, five sessions each. Um, and they kind of once you've got a little bit more familiar with the platform and you're like, OK, I just want to do some of the Pilates sessions now and you can run through that program. Then we have our live schedule. Um, so live classes are delivered at the moment, as I mentioned, by the renal rehab team at King's College. They're open to anyone. So uh, as long as you have access to kidney beam, as you do um, in Ireland, you can sign up to these sessions, which means you can physically do a live session with a physiotherapist from King's College London um, streamed directly into your living room or your kitchen or wherever you fancy doing it, um, which is fantastic because we know that they're going to be safe. We know that if there's anyone living with any comorbidities or just feeling uh, a certain way that day, they've got someone there who can give them not only the session, but tailor it or adapt it and check in on them as and when needed. I believe there are four a week that run now, uh, um, all in the mornings at different times. So yeah, feel free to sign up get checked in and, and see what's around. We have groups. Um, these are used left less often, but they are closed groups. Um, if there's, for example, anyone who enjoys the sessions with Rosie, the hit sessions, they can jump in here and meet other people who have enjoyed those sessions and maybe have a chat about, is there a new one coming? Or, you know, is there gonna be a follow-up program? Um, they're not used as frequently uh, um, as they used to be because people now have access to the variety of products that are available on the on-demand page. And then, as I mentioned, uh, we've got the blog that has just news about what's going on. Uh, we've got some interesting uh, case studies of some physios in Newcastle that were using kidney beam in their day room for patients in the hospital. So they were doing the live sessions with Kings, but as a group in Newcastle Hospital, which is a really different way that we weren't expecting people to use it. We always expected it to be one-to-one -one with the patients. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, yeah, I think that's it in terms of the platform as the most simple uh, kind of overview. Within your beam, you've got obviously tracking um, of certain items. So you can also schedule sessions. You can see what your progress is between into your programs. Um, you can also track your activity. So what sessions I've done. If I've gone out for a walk that day and I'm like, oh, I want to track that so that I've got that in there. I can manually enter that as well, just so I've got one place where I can track my activity. 
I think that's it in terms of a demo, uh, in terms of Kidney Beam. I guess any questions we'll keep for the end, but was there anything that I've missed, Carol, or anything specifically you wanted me to highlight? Uh, no, I think there'll be lots and lots of questions. I suppose it looks really useful. And, and um, I, I, I think having the starter program, because I think when you have that much choice and that much variety, it can be difficult to say, OK, where will I actually start? So I think that's great design that here's a little taster program to try out um, before we um, before you actually decide where to go and then being able to track your activity. Do you, In terms of deciding what to do do you need to get you don't need to get sign off formally from your um consultant you can just sign up yourself but talk to your consultant if you feel nervous you're you're in your nephrology team yeah yeah exactly you don't uh, for, to join up to a platform anyone can join up at any point um we always recommend that they talk to their care team first um just in case there are any uh, contraindications that you know you're told not to do pilates or you know etc yeah. it's quite rare that they are um mm -hmm. but we also recommend that when someone jumps in regardless of their fitness level start with something easy like the getting started program um just because then not only do they kind of start from the base level for their fitness but also getting to know the platform um you know it's a new it's a new environment almost it's like going to a new clinical room or space you know you kind of need to get into the habit of it so we always say come in have a brief look but start on a simple program whether it's the getting started or the 12 week renal rehab because it will guide you through and you'll become more familiar with the platform and then once you've finished it you can say okay I feel a lot stronger I'm going to give something else a go um and the live sessions are always highly recommended because you get to meet so many other lovely people living with CKD across the UK really which is a big benefit because it creates that that connection. And just to mention, we yeah. in the IK that we we for all the contact details we have of healthcare professionals working in nephrology, we've actually written to them, telling them about uh, kidney beam and that we're running this event tonight, and we'll uh, make it available online afterwards, so you can point your nephrologist or your team to it if they don't know about it. And it's also covered in Support Magazine, and we'll be doing a follow up article. In the winter version of Support Magazine, we'll be asking patients to describe their experiences with it. So anybody who does sign up, we'd love to hear from you afterwards. Um, so that's great, Mel. So um, before we get to the questions and answers, we're just going to uh, hear from the person who has made this all happen, this very exciting development. So I'm going to ask James Nolan, chairperson of PK4F, to say a few words. <clears throat> uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, Carol. I'm absolutely delighted to be invited here this evening and more importantly, it's great to see so many people joining us and showing an interest in this BEAM exercise and wellbeing program. Um, before I tell everyone a little bit about the Punchatan Kidney Research Fund, I would like to just thank a few people from the outset. First of all, a massive thank you to Colin White from the Irish Kidney Association. Colin was the first person who contacted the PKRF about the BEAM exercise and wellbeing program. And he positively outlined the potential benefits to kidney patients if the program was established in Ireland. He really was the catalyst for the program getting started here. Um, I'd like to thank Carol and all the Irish Kidney Association who have come on board with huge support for the kidney BEAM program. This is absolutely essential as it helps spread the awareness of the availability of this service through their patient network in Ireland. Um, the IKA did a superb article in the recent support magazine. As Carl just mentioned, they're also writing to the healthcare professionals and they're facilitating this Zoom meeting tonight. So massive thank you to Colin, Claire and all the IKA for all their help. Um, I'll be talking about the BEAM team in a few minutes. But I would also like to say a huge thank you to Claire for coming on board and endorsing this project as her support and all the support of all the different healthcare professionals who help us are crucial to, to, to the success of the Kidney Bean Programme here in Ireland. So thank you, Claire. So Colin invited me here to give you a little bit of information about the PKRF and myself. So. My own background is similar to a lot of people joining us tonight. I was born with kidney problems and inevitably ended up on dialysis in 1986. I did both the hemo and the peritoneal dialysis. And then in 1987, when I got quite sick, my family were approached 
about the possibility of a living donation. So very luckily for me, on the 25th of July, 1987, my sister Catherine gave me the greatest gift that any human being can give to another human being. She gave me one of her kidneys and she gave me life. And I will always be grateful to Catherine. And in order to try and put something back, I started the Punch Tank Kidney Research Fund back in 1990. And in very simple terms, I had huge interest in horses and horse racing. And um, I started the race back in 1990. I actually rode in the first 13 runnings of the race. And to date, this race has raised over 1.8 million euro for kidney related projects. And some of the projects that we've been involved in to date included the building of a brand new kidney unit in Temple Street Children's Hospital, the creation of a home hemodialysis training unit at Beaumont, several kidney related research projects in tandem with the Irish Research Council, our art therapy programmes, and most recently, the co-sponsoring of the pilot peer support programme with the Irish Kidney Association. So when Colin White approached me about the BEAM exercise and wellbeing programme, I went over to London to try and to check it out to see what potential benefits there were to kidney patients in Ireland. I got to meet the team over there who were running the programme. And I have to say, I was very impressed with everything. I really thought there was something here that could help kidney patients in Ireland. The team appeared to me to be very professionally set up and very professionally run. It was very simple for patients to access it. It was free to all kidney patients. There seemed to be a programme that would fit all levels of physical ability. There was additional dietary, educational and general well-being information provided, which I also liked. And also from a PKRF point of view, it was accessible to everyone, no matter where they were in Ireland. You didn't have to be in Beaumont or Donegal or Cork or Sligo, where we do the other projects. You could be anywhere in Ireland and you could access this service. And that was important to the PKRF. At the time, former Leinster and Ireland rugby player James Tracy had raised money for the PKRF through a Freezebury challenge. So with his background in sport, when he approached us with, with the contribution to the charity, I thought it would be a suitable project for James to support. And James was totally in favour of the programme and I'm very grateful to him for giving the money to the PKRF. And that's how we now have the James Tracy PKRF Beam Exercise and Wellbeing Programme in Ireland. By way of concluding, I would like to add that I know how incredibly lucky I am to have celebrated the 36th anniversary of my kidney transplant earlier this year. And all credit is due to my sister Catherine for making that tough decision back in 1987 to give me a second chance in life. I would add, for me personally, I cannot emphasize enough the importance, the role of sport and physical activity has contributed to me staying healthy for so long. 36 years transplanted this year, and I genuinely put my hands up and say sport has been a massive contribution to me staying as fit and healthy for so long. Um, as some of you might know, I'm a huge fan of the transplant games, the transplant and dialysis games, which take place annually. These games, they give me a wonderful goal to aim for, which in turn gives me the motivation to exercise and train every year, get fit, lose a bit of weight, look after myself. And the reward for that is I get to compete in my chosen sports of athletics and golf at the different transplant games. Now, there's many facets to the games. Apart from the amazing countries that you get to visit, the honor of representing your country, you also get to meet a phenomenal peer support group. who are also in a similar situation in life to yourself. And I was trying to think of one person tonight that kind of summed up the benefit of physical exercise. And there's a guy I'm very friendly with called Stefan Breidunk in Leipzig in Germany. I first met him nine years ago, at the German National Sports Championships. Stefan is nine years waiting on a kidney transplant. And I met him earlier on this year in May in Berlin at their German National Sports Championships. And despite being on dialysis, he was doing the 100 meters, the long jump, the relay and the golf. 
And at a quiet moment, he said to me, he did not know where he would be in life without sport. He explained further that when he was doing his sport, it was the one time in his life where he could go to a certain place in his mind where he was not thinking or worrying about his kidney disease and his dialysis. And that is the beauty that sport and physical activity offers everyone that's on here tonight. Um, for me, I'm really excited because I feel with the backing of Dr. Claire Kennedy um, and using the BEAM team at the IKA with their fantastic support, particularly their patient network, I simply want to encourage as many people as possible to try out the James Tracy PKRF BEAM Exercise and Wellbeing Programme. As I believe the physical and mental benefits to being active are enormous. And you never know, this just might be the starting point for someone out there to representing Ireland at a future transplant games. So thank you very much and good luck to everyone. Great. Thanks, James. I, I don't think anybody could put it any better. Uh, very inspirational. And you can see on screen, you know, how well James looks and the energy. And he's been, a, you know, an inspiration uh, to so many of us in, in the transplant world and the amount of great work um, that he's done. And as I say, um, he's put so much effort into this and to helping kidney patients. Um, so thank you very much, James. And um, thanks um, for the appreciation to us and to um, Dr. Claire Kennedy as well. Um, so we're going to open it up now to questions. So you can raise your hand. Um, there's quite a few of us here, so it might take a minute or two to get to us or you can put a question um, into the chat and Colin White is going to facilitate um, this conversation. Right, uh, questions, let's be having you. Um, I think personally, I'm a little bit kind of in awe of, of what's available. And um, I've been fortunate enough to know James for many years. Um, I'm permanently in awe of him. <laughs> he's a... He's, he's, uh, a fantastic gentleman and uh, a, a real uh, example to us all. And um, Claire has been a, a, a great friend to the Kidney Association um, in, in recent years. And um, I think a great example of how when, like I think tonight is a great example of, of collaboration um, actually delivering something really meaningful. That's like we have people coming from all sides to um, Kind of share just how feasible and viable and that it is so um anyone got any questions in relation to kind of registration recording it is there anybody got thoughts on should we have a i don't know a kidney beam group or what like get to get your thoughts out there like that's that's what this evening is about is 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 about you getting to learn a little bit about the programme, but then also have your own input. So stick a hand up or take yourself off mute. And um, yeah, let's be having you. Colin, one question for Mel, please. Go ahead. Um, Mel, just wondering, do you also open the group up to people who have actually donated kidneys? And I, I'm asking for a specific reason. Uh, so the platform is actually available to um, anyone that we identify either living with kidney disease or any caregivers of. Um, we've never had any individual individuals that have that have donated um, request to this point, but that doesn't mean that we wouldn't. And I think it's really important because they are as much part of the CKD community as an individual receiving a transplant. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely something that we'd offer to anyone that showed an interest. So they could join up and they could try and select a program that would suit their specific fitness level. There'd be no reason why they couldn't join up. There's no specific content to say if you've donated a kidney, this is the right content for you. It would be the same as the on-demand library for everyone. And um, they jump in and go, OK, let's let's start with a get started program and, and see where we want to develop. But, yeah, there's no reason why they couldn't. Thank you. Right. Um, as somebody who is a carer for somebody with kidney disease, um, yeah, I can absolutely see the motivation that um, 
the the poor woman now is going to be um, kind of leave me alone, stop making me exercise. <laughs> um, it'd be great to actually have the facility to point at specific, uh, well thought out stuff. Um, we have a question for outside of the kidney community. Like um, we obviously there's liver, heart, lung uh, transplant recipients out there. Is there any reason why they should, shouldn't, can't, couldn't um, engage with with kidney beam? That's from El, obviously. Um, we the content has been specifically curated for kidney disease, so I wouldn't recommend um, anyone jump in and and start to kind of take participate in the sessions if that isn't the criteria they'd fit in. Um, it doesn't mean that they can't go in and do, for example, a yoga session. Um, but just to note that the content is very, very specific to anyone living with CKD um, or a caregiver of, uh, et cetera. So while it's, yeah, there's there's nothing to say that they couldn't. There's nothing also that that specialist clinical knowledge that we have for people living with CKD isn't there for people who have had, for example, liver transplant. So while... Um, they they would be totally dependent on their own self management, which I wouldn't necessarily advise because anyone outside of the kind of the kidney community wouldn't necessarily know what kidney beam is. Um, so you know, if you were to go to your your transplant uh, clinician and say, "Am I allowed to do kidney beam?" They'd have to find out what we are and see if we're relevant. So I think I personally would say it's probably not the space for someone who has only got a liver transplant. If the liver transplant is in addition to a kidney then yes because that that would class as kind of almost a comorbidity that our clinicians should be able to refer and, and deal with but yeah if it was just around liver and there was no kidney um specific condition going on i probably wouldn't recommend kidney beam right it doesn't mean to say that there's not future development about yeah. you know uh, facilitating content um, for other transplants and other conditions as well. But for the moment, I would probably say to stick to just people either caregiving for someone living with CKD or someone living with CKD. I think with my Irish Kidney Association hat on, like, isn't it exciting that this programme is so specific and has been planned out for people with CKD? Like we're, we're not looking at signing up to a generic program or, or trying to kind of bend a, a, another program to fit. It's this program has been uh, designed to, to fit our community, which is, which is pretty wonderful. Do we have any more questions? Just one uh, to, yeah, to Mel. Uh, yeah, just are there any of the uh, exercises specifically light exercises for, for people that are actually undertaking dialysis sessions can they participate in any of those light exercises or would they uh, be recommended you'd have to speak so when you sign up you can specifically send a message across to the the individual leading the session um to kind of give that information and say you know this is my specific circumstances and they should be able to adapt the session for you they are specialist trained physiotherapists so they should be able to to give any adaptations there are also a library of on demand uh, content for people doing exercises while on dialysis um, but all i would recommend is if you can't find that space to message them. Just drop us a message at uh, Kidney Beam, hello at Beam Feel Good, um, and we can pass that straight on to Charlene and you can have access straight to Charlene and discuss your specific case. And then she can recommend whether the live session is appropriate for you, whether one of the four is the right one, you know, et cetera. So you get really that complete tailored clinical advice directly from Charlene, um, should you need it. I was just thinking that it may, it may take the monotony or the, the boredom of dialysis uh yeah. the session I think it's been long you know might, might just change their attitude you know so yeah well I think that's why we had, added all of the we added all of the on-demand content as well because we were conscious that some people who are on dialysis might be sitting with an iPad or a screen and even while you're on dialysis you know you've got limited movement to a degree but you can still do something so there's a whole series of videos that can be done on demand um, just in case it didn't you know coincide with a live session and you, you can't have access to a camera or something while you're sitting in the dialysis or you can't log on etc then you've got those mm. selection of on-demand videos and you can go oh okay today I'm going to do you know, the <laughs> arm movements or the leg movements or whatever it is that you've decided you fancy doing for that day. Thank Do you mind you. if I step in there just for two seconds? Please. <laughs> um, yeah, the on-demand classes, I've I've looked them up for like people specifically on dialysis. And for example, there's, you know, arm weights 
with a very light weight, but it's the other guy, the guy has a fistula on his other arm, which is currently being needled and being used for dialysis. So it very much takes into account fistula and being on dialysis. Um, you know, so you will find the classes that you're looking for from that point of view. And having spoken to the physios in Tala, um, they use kidney beam a lot. And um, I know that they are happy to use a lot of the on-demand um, programs for patients who are currently sitting on their dialysis machine and doing dialysis. Um, so yeah, there's definitely on-demand ones there for you. And as Mal said, the live ones, I'm not, you'll have to um, see if that coincides and works out for you, but certainly they're very tailored to dialysis. Yeah. I'm just going to show very quickly, just um, just probably to make it even quicker for you. So all I've done is pop into kidney beam um, at the top here on demand and popped there's dialysis as a filter. And these are all the videos that I've been uh, tagged as safe to do while on dialysis. So you can see here, <laughs> as Claire mentioned, there's quite a variety of different things. There's even a QA and a about someone who did it while they were on dialysis. You know, if you're not sure and you're like, oh, I need a little bit of reassurance from someone who's been in the same situation. There's some of those, there's some gentle stretches that has been deemed uh, potentially appropriate, some stretches. And you can see these individuals are some of them still um, on dialysis while they're recording the videos. Um, some of them are positioned as if they were on dialysis, but it, there's quite a variety here that you can look through and, and give them a go. Um, yeah. But again, if, if you ever can't find something you need or you want some more advice, all you have to do is reach out and we have access to Charlene at all times um, or even Claire at a certain point if, you know, there's a certain case that she might be more familiar with. Um, so between them, there will always be clinical expertise to make sure that you get the right advice um, about which content might be relevant. Right. Um, no, that was a very relevant point from Eddie about mm -hmm. um, like maybe looking at using your dialysis session as kind of right well i'm on dialysis three times a week so let me use one two or three of those sessions to to get in a few minutes of exercise it it kind of helps the routine of getting the exercise um it helps as eddie said with the the, the tedium that can sometimes come with the dialysis session um so yeah certainly something worth uh worth thinking about and um like I think Mel has opened up kind of, it's like opening up a sweet shop there. Like there's just so many delights, uh, so many options to to choose from that I think uh, there, there's got to be something for everybody in whatever mood or or, or uh, whatever level of ability they're at at the time. So do we have any more questions? Could I maybe ask one, um, what would be the smallest amount of time somebody would have to spend per week to see any kind of benefit from the program because i know it can be a bit intimidating for people to get started on us they think they have to make this huge commitment um is that a question for me i for can dr. answer Claire? that if you like probably, probably dr Clay, yeah. yeah i mean i would personally say anything is better than nothing um these sessions start at two minutes long three minutes long two minutes is better than no minutes so i would say if you've got two spare minutes and you do a two minute session, then that's better than nothing. And maybe you'll just realize that you enjoyed it. And next week you'll do two two minute sessions and build from there. As I said, this isn't for someone who, you know, we don't we're not looking to all run the marathon together next month. We're looking to just, you know, build the bricks brick by brick. It's very, you know, it's it's slow and sustained progress that that we're hoping for. Um, you know, we're not looking for quick fixes here. We're looking for slow, something sustained that people can maintain and enjoy long term. So I would say personally, I would think two minutes is better than no minutes. So start with two minutes if that's what, what you like. But everyone else is free to give their answers there, too. I would just um, echo what Claire has said. Um, I think what's important when you're coming to something like this for the first time is to find the habit. It's about changing your behavior as much like as the first step almost before the fitness it kind of bit kicks in it's the same as if anyone was to join a gym you know you can't jump into a gym and go to five sessions daily you know you're just going to burn out um so it's about finding the habit what i always recommend i used to be a yoga teacher in a previous life is finding one time a week that to do one session you know whether that's a two minute session as claire mentioned or a five minute but finding that same time and just trying to keep that same time and once that becomes a habit Okay, maybe add a second session and it may be like Claire said two sessions of two minutes but I think the first thing is trying to find a habit of okay I'm logging on to kidney beam 
this is my time to do a session. I'm, I'm going to see what mood I'm in. Today, I'm in a two-minute mood. Tomorrow, I'm in a five-minute mood. Um, but yeah, it, 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 I think the first thing is get logged on, get familiar with the platform. That can be in itself a massive hurdle to kind of cross, you know, getting people into the mo the movement of I'm I'm signing up I'm going to do this I'm going to do my first session, um, and that's where I think the live classes you know once you get a bit more familiar and some confidence the live classes can really help because they're at a set time every week the same time the same length so it could be two to three months down the line you're like okay I'm going to join every Monday live session because I know it's at Monday and I know it's at 11 a.m. and I know it's 30 minutes um, so I think the first thing is what we always recommend is get signed up. Do a session, even if that's an educational, just so you can see how the platform works um, and then find that habit of once a week that may become more, many more times a week. But over time, try not to push it too far too soon. And that's probably the advice that Claire would give to any patient with any condition, I really suspect. I think um, it'd be just one key follow up on that is um, diaries. Diaries are brilliant when you're starting into physical activity because you don't realize kind of how well you're doing unless you kind of maybe have a bit of a record of it that you look back and you kind of say, well, gosh, in October, I was only doing the, the two and three minute sessions each time. Now I'm up to six and seven. Like it's, it, it is a great kind of personal motivator um, to, to just kind of keep note. And the fact that like Mel showed us how the um, kidney beam, like it does record what you're doing and you can put in, um activities manually as well that you can keep track of where you're at. Um there's an interesting question also, here in the chat. Um, sorry Colin, I was just yep. gonna say you can also schedule sessions. So if you go in the first time and you sign up and you say, oh I really I'm gonna do this two minute session, but that one I want to do tomorrow at 10 a.m. You can schedule an on-demand and you get a like a, a calendar invite that reminds you as if it was going to be a live session and say, oh don't forget that you said that you do this tomorrow. Um, and it's just kind of that little kind of accountability. You know, if you, it, it's all well and good to go. Oh, tomorrow I'll do a session, and then you get to the morning. You're like, oh, I'll do it this afternoon, and this afternoon goes. To, oh, I'll do it this evening. You know, but once you've scheduled it and you get the reminder, you're like, no, nope, I promised myself I would do this at eleven o'clock or you know eleven thirty because I knew I was going to be on dialysis, for example. Um, so yeah, that's another hopefully little trick. <laughs> like it, um, Mel. You're on the hot spot again. Um, I would miss the live sessions uh, because I'd be working. Uh, would I miss out on support if I used the on-demand service only? No. Um, so we are always at the end of an email. Um, so you won't have like a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation with the instructor on the Zoom call. So usually at the beginning of that call, they might have a chat with you if, if you specified something. But at any point across your journey with Kidney Beam, all you have to do is email the the email address you'll see on everywhere is hello at beamfeelgood.com. And that will come straight through to myself or um, Natasha, who is our studio manager, of which we, you know, we'll either respond if it's a tech related question, whether it's a, I can't get into the platform, whether it's a clinical question, it will go straight across to Charlene. So anyone that's a kidney beamer, as we like to call you, um, has access to all of those people at any point, at any time. You just have to email us if you're not being in those live sessions personally. Perfect. Uh, tell us more about yoga, Mel. <laughs> tell us about the sessions what like is there kind of uh an introduction for us beginners is there kind of <laughs> if, if you're more experienced how, how does it all work so there's a variety of sessions that have been offered i think by three different instructors over the time um we had a individual who had had transplant i believe two transplants um over the course of their life they're an instructor kira um who we met through one of the uk charities one of the england-based charities um, and she has a variety of sessions. There are some more spiritual based. There are some more uh, physical, you know, I want a chest session or I want a beginner session. Um, all of them are in there. Some of them have been packaged up. So you can, like I mentioned about programs, five or six of them put together as a little bundle and said, you know, you can follow these programs through. Um, there, I believe there is an introduction to yoga. And then there's also kind of, it goes off to say, you know, I want to focus on, um more the spirituality or a little bit more of the, the the flexibility rather than the strength side of yoga so yeah there's there's a variety of videos on there and i'd say if uh, if you've got the time have a play do the sessions 
Um, and if there's something, like I say, that you think there could be that you that you're missing, just drop us an email, um, and we're we're more than happy to to go back to the team and go, okay, we've had a request for this type of content. Could we do it? Who would we get to do it? How do we find them? Um, and how do we how do we deliver that? And when when's the time frame of that? Um, and everyone who signs up can see when that's announced. And like, there's usually a newsletter sent out. Say, look at this great new content. Uh, you can find it here. Um, but yeah, there's quite a variety of yoga um, as well as many different disciplines. I think we've got Pilates on there. There might be some mixed martial arts, I believe. There's meditation sessions, which I think some of my meditation sessions are even in there. Um, if you fancy listening to my voice even more. Be good. I, th I think I'll be talking to Carol about moving the furniture in my office to um, be doing a bit more <laughs> of these exercises during the day. Um, what about the dietary information and the educational information? Like, obviously, particularly the dietary information is going to be need to be relatively specific, uh, like depending on where the person is on, on their kind of kidney journey. Yeah, so the, the information when you come to educational, they've obviously had to be a bit more generic because they're not going to know everyone's specific case. Um, so it's a little bit more about like what's good for me if I'm at this stage of CKD, uh, what's not ideal for me. Um, and they've been delivered not by Charlene, but by the dietitian teams. So we've partnered with many different clinical specialities um, across the platform to make sure that, you know, the dietary information is delivered by dietitians and the specialist teams. Uh, the educational information is quite wide ranging. It can be I'm feeling demotivated to exercise. Is this quite common? Or it could be uh, something like I've got this uh, symptom or side effect happening. I is it something, you know, that you might be able to answer? So they're, they're quite wide ranging. And again, those topics are ones that come from patients. Um, so, you know, we had a selection of videos that we prepared as a clinical team and as kidney beam and then the patients came back saying oh you know this is a question that I have to ask or this and we try once we answer those questions um as I think it was Niall earlier mentioned uh, about support when we get the questions come in we look at whether that information is just not available and we go okay we'll answer this individual but actually does that mean we should also create a video that the next time someone doesn't need to answer that ask that question so that is constantly ongoing and you know they're done more as a kind of informal interview with the clinicians usually rather than a lecture of you kind of listening to someone tell you everything that you probably have every time you go to see a clinical care team um but they're done more as an interview kind of a soft interview where we ask them questions and they answer and we cut them together so yeah but like i say if there is ever anything that people are missing please reach out because this journey is all about finding more patients with different unique cases and making sure that the content is there for every person, not just, you know, bulking everyone in as patients with CKD as, as much as we want to make it specialized, even for your specific journey. And if there's something you're missing, then, then just let us know because we, we can't always know everyone's unique case. Right. Um, another question here, I think we'll be coming towards the end of our questions. Um, Children and adolescents, um, is, is the program suitable? Like, is it kind of, let's say there's a child or an adolescent within the family who who is um, on, on the renal journey, like can the whole mm -hmm. family kind of engage in, in uh, some of the activities together? So Kidney Beam specifically has been targeted towards adults living with CKD. But if any of you have been on the website, you'll see that there has been an exciting new area created called Kidney Beam kids is going to be renamed to. So we are currently doing a research pilot with 40 under 18s who are living with CKD of some form. Um, and that's just about to start in partnership with King's. And I think it's the University of Edinburgh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's specifically seeing whether the content and the platform works for the under 18s um, before we kind of decide to open it out. What I'd recommend is the sessions on the adult site can be used as long as you make sure that it's not too intense. And obviously, the if there is an adolescent uh, wanting to participate, again, check with their clinical care team if they're living with CKD, because it, it has been targeted towards um, the adult audience. So please make sure that you check with the right person. But in the not too distant future, we should have a whole area of the site that's specifically targeted to under 18s um, that will sit independent from the adult one so that kind of the under 18s have their own place to go, um, which I'm sure will have 
uh, a different vibe or maybe a bit more gamification is what we're looking at there, perhaps. Brilliant. Um, I think maybe just to conclude, like the um, the concept of patients as partners is often um, put forward in in kind of the area of chronic illness, and um, I think Kidney Beam has kind of walked right down that road. That it's it is a partnership. That um, it's the realization that um, the person uh, with chronic kidney disease, their family around them, are part of the team that work with the medical team to. To, 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 to kind of make the quality of life as, as good as it possibly can be. So I think we'll wind up the questions there and I will pass over to Carol. Great, thanks very much. And it was good, great to see all those questions. I'm just going to do a quick roundup of some of the other kind of big developments that are going on at the moment. And just to mention uh, Transplant Team Ireland that uh, international competitions have resumed. As you can see from the photograph, a very happy team uh, went out to Perth and it was great fun and great crack. I was with them. And as you can see, you don't have to be a super fit athlete to join the team. And the team will be going to the Europeans on July 21st to July 28th. So maybe by signing up to Kidney Beam, maybe that's the first start in terms of joining the team. There's no selection. Anybody who wants to join can join. You don't have to be particularly fit. You just have to be interested. And I have to say, it's great crack, great fun. And even if people maybe are on social welfare and feel they can't afford to go, in the IK, we actually support people to fundraise so that they can actually um, afford to go. So certainly that's a target. Maybe people uh, can set themselves. And even if your um, most exercise was throwing darts in a pub, there's darts available in the competition. So really recommend uh, thinking about that. Um, just to mention our Munster Support Centre, many of you will be familiar with that. Um, it looks uh, still a little bit decrepit, um, but those photographs were taken a few weeks ago. So huge work going on. So that could be opening soon for those of you based in Munster. And you could see how close it is to the hospital. That's actually a hospital building there. And there's a little um, opening in the wall. So literally, you can walk from the hospital right into the Munster Support Centre. So we're really looking forward to that. And then our online peer support group, as um, mentioned, um, thanks to James and PKRF, we've gotten this. It's available nationally. All these patients with um, uh, kidney disease have all been trained, especially. We had a great session with them there just um two weeks ago on a Saturday where we brought them together again, their supervision. And what happens is that if somebody wants to talk to a patient um, that has gone through it, because there's nothing as good as talking to somebody else who's been in the same situation, you just fill out a form, the link is there. And then we try and match you to the person who has had experience of that exact problem that you want to talk about. So it might be about thinking about home dialysis, it might be about having a transplant, um, Anything we try and match you and the feedback we're getting on this is really, really good. And again, it's it's a free service. And then the other thing we're uh, doing at the moment, thanks to a grant from the National Concert Hall, we're partnering with them and we're doing what's called the Music and Mind program. Now, this at the moment is just for young people, 12 to 24. And as you can see, um, it's great fun. No musical experience is needed. It's both about percussion, playing drums, and um, singing. And if you're interested, um, if it's just somebody young in your life, or if you're, um, I can see from some of you, you're less than 24 years old, um, click on this uh, ika.ie music um, to fill out a form to find out more about it. And I have to say, we had a taster session with our peer support volunteers, and it's absolutely great fun and great crack. And then another um, big event coming up this Saturday, the 14th of October, we're going to have a service of remembrance and Thanksgiving. And if you are interested in the transplant team, they play a big role um, in this service, uh, as you can see from the photographs, and they, they were the team kit. So it might be a great opportunity, quite apart from the service itself, which is um, very emotional, very um, moving and inspirational service to actually meet and talk um, to other um, members, uh, patients who are actually um, doing exercise and just indicate your interest in attending so we can look at catering 
after the um service we provide a light meal so just go on to the ik website and register your attendance on that so that's another um big date coming up and then you know if you're not a member of the ika um, please do join because membership is free and um you know the more uh, people we have in the organization the more we can be representative of patients views um we're currently advocating on the human tissue bill uh, based on consultation with our members. We're doing a pre-budget submission based on what our members are saying to us. Uh, we'll be in the doyle in two weeks' time, hopefully talking about it. Um, and, you know, we'll have some patients there talking about it. So feel free, if you're not already a member, uh, to join the IKA. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Colin because one of the things we always do is we get feedback on how useful people find the sessions. And hopefully the technology is going to work because, as Mel said, sometimes it does work and sometimes it just glitches. So Colin is going to run two surveys. You can see the first one coming up there. And if you would just click um, to say, how useful did you find the session? <clears throat> Not seeing any feedback come in, Carl. Are you seeing any responses? I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing that 23 of 23 people um found a session very useful. So that's very yes. encouraging that people found a session useful. So if you'd like to end the poll um yep. now, that's or good. you can show the results as well if you want to, so that people know we're telling the truth to you. That was um, very important. Can you see the results there? And, um, yeah. and then we have a second poll, which is how likely are you now to sign up to kidney bean? Right, so 21 of 23 people said they were definitely likely to sign up and the remaining eight people said very likely. So that's very encouraging. Delighted to see those results. And what we'd love to do is those of you who do sign up and use it, we'd love to hear your views. We'd really uh, um, love to hear how you found it. Um, and, you know, it'd be great to share your experiences with other um, patients using Support Magazine because, you know, as we all know, hearing from other patients um is great it's it's really the way to get through so um yeah like i think as was mentioned earlier like if you do sign up and you find it enjoyable clinic time talk to people get the word out there like uh, talk to fellow patients talk to uh your healthcare professionals um kind of your your nurses your doctors the the <laughs> whole way through and Let's get the word out there about kidney beam. Like I think we've all seen what a wonderful resource it is, and um, like courtesy of of James and the PKRF and the support from um, Claire and the team in St James's. Um, like this is coming free, and it's coming into our into into our homes. Like we don't even have to go out on a wet night in 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 kind of the depths of winter to go and do it. Uh, we can do it in the warmth when we're we're watching whatever it might be we're watching on television. Great. Thanks. Uh, you know, because we really want to support this and we'd love to hear your ideas about how we can really um, get more and more people involved because that makes it more fun. So before we finish up, I'm going to hand over to our national chairperson, Eddie Flood, who's going to thank um, the various people involved and say a few words. So, Eddie, over to you. Thanks, Carol. Um, thanks, Colin and Carol, for facilitating the session tonight. And uh, thanks, Claire, for joining us and to give us... <laughs> Great inspirations and uh, talks uh, and uh, information. And to James, uh, thanks very, very much for your support down the years. It's it's really appreciated. And we probably wouldn't be here for, for, without your support in a lot of uh, projects that we've we've uh, we've undertaken over the years. And thanks to Mel for uh, presenting this very very exciting project. I think it's it's a new departure for for everybody. It'll be getting lots to get used to and. Uh, 
I think people shouldn't be afraid of uh, of, uh, of trying it out, to give it a go. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And I think um, I think uh, you know it'll benefit everybody in the future if they, if they try. Just try it once and see what happens. And you know, it, you know, as Carol said earlier, it, uh, use it or lose it. So we're all getting on a little bit, and uh, you know, we don't we don't can't turn back the clock. So we should try and you know help each other, help each other, and help ourselves by. By just doing a little bit extra every day, and that'll that'll be a big, big help to us in the future. So, um, thanks to everybody for for joining us tonight, and it, it, it was a great turnout. So, I'm delighted every everybody uh, enjoyed the the session. So, till the next time. So, thank you very much, and see you then.